How's everyone doing today, all right? Come on, good? It's an exciting day, isn't it? Come on, all right? That's all I get out of the Marines, all right? How about, how about the Army? The Navy in the house? Come on, Army's in the house, right? All right, thank God. Navy, yes, we can't forget our name. Coast Guard? Air Force? All right, there we go, we got the Air Force too. Hey, thank you for joining us today for this great announcement. Uh, you know, this is about partnerships, and the stuff that I'm doing in the county is not possible. To try to achieve a 1.6 budget, uh, to do great projects, to advance things forward, it's tough. And uh, I need partners in the legislature. Rich Jacobs is here, our county legislator from Colony. Rich, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sean Morris, our chairman, is here. Um, you know, Frank Camisso is on his way. But I have to really thank them to, to help me make this happen. And uh, Paul Mahan, the town supervisor and Colony and the town board out there for uh, getting on board with this. This is exciting stuff. You know, one of the things, and uh, I told Jack, I'm not, where is he? Oh, he's next to me of all people. I'm not gonna get emotional and I said he can't cry to the end because, uh, you know, being a, a, a veteran myself and being at war for the last 12 years, you know, this, this nation's never called on its citizen soldiers more in the last 12 years in the history of this great country. And we have troops that over 10,000 make New York State their home every year. Think about that. And with the downsizing of the military, uh, these are my statistics. So I figured it's going to be 20 to 25,000 coming here, looking for jobs, trying to reintegrate back into society. And it's going to be tough. And, and the thing that bothers me the most is that the suicide rate right now outweighs the men and women that put their life down for this country in the last 12 years. It's, 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 it's shameful and it's hard and we need to do more. And we need to, when they come home, get them transitioned back into society. We have too many women veterans now walking the streets of downtown Albany in this greater capital region. It's a need for more shelters for women, for men, to get them back. You know, it's, it's not the norm. You go off to serve your country, you don't wake up one day and decide you want to shoot at somebody, you know, and uh, to defend this country. But you do what you have to do to defend it and you come back to your loved ones. And now it's our obligation to be that crutch for these soldiers that come home and to say, look, it, we're going to help you trans transition back into society. We're going to help you get there. And uh, when I met Jack Downing from Soldier On, uh, you know, being a veteran, it was hard for me to decide what, what I wanted to get involved with. And, they sold me, I went to Pittsfield, I went there for the day, and I said, wow, I like this. This is about getting results done. And the hardest thing in government right now is to do programs like this, to do things outside the box, but find the funding for it. Times are still tough. We're still coming out of this great recession, you know, but people are still having a hard time finding jobs, paying the bills, paying the rent, paying the mortgage, you know, putting food on the table. And we owe it to our veterans to sit there and get them off the streets, get them back into society, and let them have the life they deserve to live after serving this great country. Um, but I want to show the short video to uh, really say uh, a lot about what's going on. So can we play the video? You know, I don't judge somebody I put anyone down because I've been there. Guys that I meet, they could really relate with me because I've been there. See, that's the difference because I've been in jail, I've been in prison. You know what I'm saying? I know what the shelter life is about, so they can relate with me. They don't judge you by your past. They judge you on your desire for change. If you really want to make a change in life, we provide you with all the tools here. If you give this program your 110%, this program could change your life and get you, get you back on your right foot. You know what I'm saying? And all you got to do is have patience. I was 16 and a half, and I actually had to have my parents sign for me to go into the Marine Corps. Um, you have this camaraderie in the military, and you have um, great areas of responsibility, and all of a sudden when you're discharged, you're back into the real world where you're pretty much on your own. At that particular time, I kind of became a loner. And uh, I went to a deep depression, um, drinking, drugging, the whole nine. 
uh, start losing things, start losing my life. I was homeless. What it did was uh, it kind of filled like a hole that I felt that I had, like an emptiness. And you just, it seemed like you couldn't find your place anywhere. That was my biggest struggle. I couldn't find where I belonged in society. I really didn't think that I would become anything. Um, I got some help, but I could never get the help that I needed for my psychological, you know. They would give you medicine, but they wouldn't give me counseling. And I needed counseling. I needed someone to talk to. We were sitting in the graveyard in Harford on a tombstone, and I was injecting myself with heroin and cocaine, and that's when I hit my rock bottom. I was tired, I was beacon. I ain't seen no future other than in death and going back to prison. I believe I got help, like some people say around here. I believe I went and got help the day before I died. I think the video says it all. You know, one, one thing when I became county executive, you, you want to do things differently, not just achieve a cap and do a great budget, but you want to do things that matter to people's lives and make a difference. And uh, not just because I'm a veteran, but I look at the passion of uh, these guys from Vietnam and the, and the memorial that they got going on in Academy Park and the passion that they put into it. And you look at the veterans through history, the way we are treated. The way some of them, you know, you were afraid to wear your uniform. You know, even when I was coming home in the airport, you see soldiers in the airport. People are afraid to go out and say, hey, thank you for what you're doing. But they don't, we didn't do it when we put the uniform on to get a pat on the back or for a medal. You know, we did it because we wanted to serve our country. We weren't looking for people to buy us, a, you know, a coffee or a cold beer or, you know, say, you know, shake your hand. We did it because we want to serve our country, period. This great nation of ours. But projects like this, you know, take a vision, and it takes partnerships, partnerships. Uh, I want to thank Governor Cuomo and his staff. I want to thank, you know, uh, the uh, Veterans Commissioner, Eric Hesse, for uh, getting involved with this. This campus that we're doing here in Norman County, people, let me tell you something. It's the first in the state of New York. This is going to be the first campus solely for veterans to transition back into society, have a place to live, go to school, learn, get counseling, where they can be with their peers. You don't take a 24-year-old male or female that's been in combat for two, three years, couple tours. Most of these, these guys and women coming off of tours have four or five tours underneath their belt. And you don't put them in a dorm room with a college kid their same age. There's no connection there. They've seen too much, but they want to go to school. And this is going to give them an opportunity. When I, when I look at the Annie Lee home and we closed that many years ago, it sat there. We're paying for the heat. <laughs> We're paying to heat it. We're paying to keep the water going, the maintenance. And it was just sitting there rotten. And with this great site next to it, the Shaker site, Shaker Heritage. And I sat there and I go, how can we make this work? And I, I went over and Jack brought me over to Pittsfield and he showed me. We have like 40, 49 residents of Albany County living over in Pittsfield because that's where they ended up and they want to come back to Albany County. So when we looked at this place, we said, how can we make it work? How can we make this campus work? It's going to be, and I'll let Jack talk about the finances of this, it's going to be well over $20 million. But that's part of today's announcement and many more coming, how we're going to do partnerships. Not, you know, here, here's your tax dollars at work. You know, we're going to do sweat equity in my office to make this happen and work, but we're not, you know, we're going to use some county resources, but we're not going to be using your tax money to pay something like this. We're going to do it in partnerships and announcements like this. And Jack is really going to get into that. And it's been an honor getting to know Jack a year ago when we turned over the Annie Lee um, caretaker's house to him and what they've done there and the vision that Soldier On has, and I'm going to let them talk about it. But again, talking about partnerships, and this is why I'm, I'm excited to stand here. Um, our great announcement 
May 31st. Our concert promoter, Jim Anderson from Wall Jam Productions, is here to tell us why May 31st is going to be a big day. And uh, I'm going to let Jim do this because this is his expertise. Jim, where are you? Oh, the other side. Thanks, Dan. My family has a history of using the arts to enhance the lives of people in our region. My mother, Vivian Anderson, often referred to as Albany's First Lady of the Arts, started the Imagination Celebration and Arts for the Handicapped here, and went on to run those programs in all 50 states and 17 foreign countries through the Kennedy Center. So putting together this concert to benefit the construction of the Home for Veterans continues my family tradition. When deciding on what bands to use for this concert, I thought of what bands really are committed to troops and to veterans and have a long history of doing that. And I thought of three bands and was hoping that we could get maybe one or two. And miraculously, we got all three. So the devil may have gone down to Georgia, but in Albany on May 31st, we're going to have the Charlie Daniels Band, <laughs> Brett Michaels, and Marshall Tucker Band. So this should be an incredible show. We, we need you all to spread the word. Hopefully, we'll get people buying tickets now that they can use for holiday presents. And I also want to thank the media for, in advance for getting on board and making everybody aware of this. So thanks a lot and let's roll a video. Hey guys, I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin. Welcome to this edition of Command Performance. We're here in downtown Nashville, Tennessee, where we're going to be talking with Charlie Daniels. Johnny, open up your boat, play your fiddle hard. Cause hell's smoking some Georgia and the devil gives you cards. If you win, you get the shiny fiddle and let it go. If you lose, the devil gets you so. Charlie, thank How you, you doing, so much buddy? for joining us. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to get right into it. Uh, what are you doing here for the Yellow Ribbon Program? We are helping to raise money and awareness of the need for our, our people who have served and their families to have education. I think there's a great need for this to help re-educate, educate people to, you know, the people who have served who deserve all the support we could possibly give them. What else have you done for the troops that... You name it. <laughs> yeah, USO shows. I've done everything but carry good. <laughs> for Jim to make this all happen. Thank you. 
But that's not it. We have a local charity event coordinator, coordinator Patrick, who's going to talk about what's going to happen before the concert, what's going to lead up, and what we're going to be doing outside the Times Union. Him and Grizz, who didn't shave his beard for a No Shave November month, right? Um, <laughs> He said he's going to shave it, though. We're going to do a charity event before the concert, and uh, we're going to sell tickets for five bucks, and he said he will shave everything off, right? Deal. Deal? There deal. you go. You heard it. He's deal. in for it. But, uh, you know, it is, it is about partnerships, and, pa and Patrick, too, stepped up to the plate, who uh, is an advocate for veterans, too, as well as Jim and everyone sitting at this table. And in a partnership that him and Grizz are going to talk about, I'm going to let them talk about it. Guys, come on up, please, Patrick. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. morning. I want to start and thank each and every one of you for supporting our growing team of uh, dedicated organizers for an event not soon to be forgotten. I'm thrilled to announce that we have put together the most amazing team of experienced motorcycle and charity event organizers known in our area and beyond. With a combined 30 plus years experience, the supporters have come to expect nothing less than the very best in charitable biker events. Starting a day off, we'll organize a flag bearing police escorted motorcycle awareness ride assembled at the Future Soldier On, the site out by the airport. The ride will end on Pearl Street where supporters will be entertained by country favorite band Skeeter Creek, legendary southern rockers E.B. Jeb, and a most amazing young artist to hit the local live music scene in a long time, classic alternative, seventh and eighth grade musicians, the number two band. In addition to the incredible lineup of entertainment, we will have a meet and greet with area custom bike builders and a custom bike show with trophies for people's choice and judges' choice, including a professional bike shoot with celebrity photographer Dino Petroselli, who happens to be here. Where are you, Dino? These are only part of the day's activities. 50-50 popcorn, cotton candy, snow cones, food, beverage, and random surprises are in store to make this a memorable event. Um, and as I see this event coming together, I'm reminded what our purpose in life is. It's to help one another. And, and it's when you're down you need the most help. Being homeless is no joke. Despair, loss of faith, and bad decisions take hold. As a lifelong avid motorcyclist, I've met thousands of bikers and shared lasting memories. The camaraderie shared is second to none. Bikers and veterans alike have always shared the call to action when a biker goes down and when a family is in, in need cries for help. Combining this togetherness with the music and entertainment industry will further invest in the greater good shared while inspiring others to support us in our endeavors. Before I introduce this gentleman over here to my left, I'm going to just go off the page for a quick moment. I have the tendency to do this, but I won't ramble too long. You know what was going to happen. There's a number of reasons why I'm involved besides the obvious. And, um, and again, there's another gentleman that's sitting out here uh, who reminded me of something that he talked about last year. His name is Mr. Ron Lewis, and he also represents the Rolling Thunder New York Five. And last year we hosted an event for a veteran, and I remember, you know, he was a lot of, he wanted to do something for the homeless. It was something not just he shared for by himself, but with his entire group. And Grizz will speak about that as soon as I stop. <laughs> but um, it's an opportunity where we can do that now, okay? So. <laughs> last but not least. Please join me in welcoming to the podium one of my closest and most inspiring veteran friends. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet, please, trust me. Mr. Tom Grizz Griswold, thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, Kiss, keep it short, stupid. That's kind of my philosophy on these things. But um, a couple months back, when this was just gearing up, um, Patrick approached me and asked me if I wanted to work on it with him. And uh, knowing what Soldier On's all about, I'm 100% behind it and 100% ready to go. Um, 
I'm a, I'm, I'm a veteran, 04 Iraq infantry vet, and I came home, and I'm, I'm one of the lucky veterans. I came home to, uh, to an amazing family and an amazing support system amongst my friends and my battle buddies. Uh, as a National Guardsman, I came home to the same neighborhood and share the same neighborhood with some of my battle buddies who are actually sitting right here, two guys I served oh. with in Iraq, um, or Cedar right here. So I, I was one of the lucky ones, and, uh, but way too many of our brothers and our sisters are falling through the cracks. Way too many of them aren't getting the services they need, and this program is a perfect way to uh, really pick them up, and it's bringing the community together, and I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces from the veteran community that I know and I've worked with and done fundraisers and things with before, and I'm seeing a lot of my bros and sisters from the road on my two-wheeling friends out here. Um, so I just want to say I'm really excited, <laughs> and just seeing the support we got just for this press release on a cold November day, May 31st, we are going to go for a one heck of a ride, and we're going to come down here on Pearl Street and have one heck of a party. And instead of going home like good little boys and girls, we're going to come inside and keep the party going with Marshall Tucker, Brett Michaels, and uh, Charlie Daniels. How awesome is that? <laughs> so I'm very excited to be a part of it, and I can't wait to get going. Thank you, guys. What else can uh, bring grown men to uh, almost tears? It's uh, it's emotional issue, you know. It really is because we see firsthand our battle buddies. We see the the effect war has on our own when we talk together. Um, but again, before I, I announce this next gentleman, Jack Downing, I want to uh, thank all the partners again because it is about partnerships. It's everyone at this table, from Jim, Pat, Grizz, and Bob Bob Elber from the, from SMG, who SMG has stepped up to the plate and has been great on this. Bob, thank you for you and what you're doing here. Thank you. But there's so many people in the audience, the veterans, Patriot Riders, the Omni County Legislature, Rich, Frank, Sean, Christine, all of them have really had the vision to do this. And Paul Mahan and Colin e again. I do, there's just so many people. And, and I always say in politics, you have to leave the ego at the door to do the people's business. And uh, sometimes that's hard. You know, we get territorial. You know, well, I'm the county exec, and I, you know, or I'm this, I'm that, I'm the mayor. Uh, but it's about the people. It's about, it's about helping the people. It's about helping the veterans. And not just the veterans, it's helping the citizens of this great Albany County and this capital region that I love so much. Um, <laughs> Jack Downing, I'm gonna let him speak for himself, but this is such a exciting project, people. Over $20 million, we're doing it, and we need your help the citizens of the capital region from all over the place to come here, support the Soldier On project. Jack, I'm gonna let you do what you do best, get up here and sell it. Thank you, buddy. Good morning. In 2001, in October, I walked into a shelter in Northampton, Mass. as the new director of a veteran shelter that was at 46% capacity and like many very veteran shelters, just kind of existing. I had spent most of my adult life working in substance abuse and in criminal justice. I worked in jails and prisons. I was a reintegration aftercare guy. And one of the joys of my life was I was getting people back on the streets while my brother, who was a district attorney, was trying to get them in the front door. I was zipping them out the back a little bit faster. But the, the reality was, what I didn't realize at the time, but I now realize, was 10% of the men I touched every day in jails and prisons were veterans. That stunned me. It also stunned me that we thought living in transitional houses in shelters with used clothing was good enough for the people who had said, I will die for you. And that's the message that I think generally we don't hear. Every veteran in America, 25 million men and women, said to us when they put on that uniform, whether they meant to say it or not, I will die for you. And we need to clearly hear that because if we do, it will change how you think what is acceptable for veterans in this country because that's what changed it for me. And what changed it for me was I had raised nine children, six went to college.
we had a good life, we had a nice home, because 25 million Americans had said they would die for me, and I never heard it. And when I heard it, I was ashamed that I had thought it was okay, and that I was doing a good job running a nice, clean, beautiful shelter like a Holiday Inn, and making sure they had plenty of used clothes to wear. So my goal became to change that. The challenge became, how do we end homelessness for veterans? Veterans are three times more homeless than any other community in our society. And the reasons are complex and difficult, but they have to do with separation from family, call to duty, being at high risk under stressors that people do not understand unless they've been there, and doing very important and brave work and then coming back and not be able to find employment or find a place to fit in easily anymore. And certainly not a place where you're taking care of your buddies and protecting people every day. So Soldier On, we decided that we were gonna build permanent housing that veterans could own, that they could live in and manage, and that they would be successful in because it would be our responsibility to deliver services to them where they lived or deliver the, them to the services they needed to stay stable and safe so they could make the decisions they wanted to make about their, their life. And we've been very blessed and fortunate. In 2005, seven or eight, a fellow from New York State walked into my building in Massachusetts and said to me, hey, I want you to come over in Albany and look at these guys under this bridge. I drive out of my office every day. I'm a Vietnam vet. I give them five bucks, but it doesn't stop. What can you do to help these guys? And I said to Bill Powers Sr., look it, I'm over here in Massachusetts. I've got about 10 or 15 people from New York already living here, Bill. And he says, I've got, I can't live with this any longer. You've got to help me. So that's how I came to Albany. Okay? And when I came here, I met this guy called Dan McCoy, and I told him about we wanted to build. And he said, huh, i got the place for you. Took us out to the airport. We met people from the Shakers. We met people from the airport commission. We walked the land. We said, yeah, man, this is fabulous. Let's get it done. For me, there were a number of pieces that had to fall in place. Currently, we have to be able to identify who are we going to serve, who are we going to help. And in New York State right now, Soldier On serves 40 counties, from Plattsburgh in New York to Kingston in the south, going out west to Syracuse. We do outreach work there every day. Dominic Sandrini is sitting right here. Stand up, Dom. Dom is a uh, four-year Marine, graduate of Western New England College, served in Iraq. He directs services in 20 counties in New York, helping us identify veterans in need of services, getting them services, and paying rents, and helping guys get things back on track. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Sitting in front of Don is an old-time Vietnam vet by the name of Jim Peluso that people in New York would have known as the former director of veteran services for the entire state. He was the director of uh, CWT at the Stratton VA here. I met Jim when he was working for the VA. He helped us coordinate and develop the grants here in New York State and helped us identify who we needed to work with and how to get out there and get these services done. So at the end of this year, at the end of this past fiscal year, we served 2,870 under-identified, underserved veterans in those 40 counties. And those men and women are now getting services. They're not being displaced and we're helping them ha uh, rapidly rehouse. But it takes money to do all this. Soldier On is a not-for-profit corporation that's been in Massachusetts, that once Dan McCoy came to us and gave us the White House, we said, look it, we want to move our corporate headquarters to New York. It's very difficult for me to get veterans to travel to Northampton and Pittsfield, Mass, two very rural towns with no major transportation. Albany offers us a much more highly visible presence with great transportation and an area of growth and support that's far greater. So we're committed now when we're moving our corporate headquarters into New York. The second thing is, <laughs> the 
second thing is that we, we needed to be able to develop this major project and there would need to be inputs from various sectors of the veterans community so that it reflected what the veterans of New York want, okay, and not what people like me might think they should have. So what we needed to do was build those relationships and that's what we're doing now and what we'll continue to do as we put this project together. We want to build at least 110 to 120 units of housing to start for veterans to own, manage, and live in. We want to put in a center for returning veterans where they can get services and benefits. We've talked to Linda Weiss, who's the director of the VA Medical Center here in Albany, the Stratton. She's very committed to support the project. She's very committed to put staff and services available so that veterans won't have to leave that facility and go to move over to Stratton or go to the outreach center. We'll get everything done in one place for vets. We want to be able to build a place where we can help people evaluate what their opportunities for employment are and get them involved with training and education and the support services necessary so the young men and women who were returning don't end up drifting into homelessness at the rate that they currently are. Here's a fact. The average Vietnam vet was seven years tumbling into homelessness upon his return. The average returning vet from this current conflict is about 18 months tumbling into homelessness if they're going to go homeless. So it's much more rapid and it comes with a lot of different issues. So people say to me, hey, what's it going to cost to do this? And I look into my crystal ball and I say, guys and gals, I don't have a real good number. We meet with architects, engineers, we talk to community planners, we talk to a number of people and they keep saying to us, you're going to have to come up with 25 to 30 million to put this all together properly. Now, that sounds like a big number to a poor guy, do you know what I'm saying? But the guys in government, Dan, it's nothing, is it, huh? <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> Tell them, Denny. Huh? Uh, <laughs> the reality is this. Because we compete with other groups for affordable housing money, we will start to get those grants going once we take title to the property. But we always, on every project we do, and currently we have projects, eight projects in five different states under development right now for veterans to own and live in. And what we know is we're, there's going to be a minimum of a 20% shortfall in any project. So we already know we're five million in the hole jumping out of the box on this project. Okay, that's the, that's the baseline, five million. So we've got to raise five million dollars. So when we heard from Patrick Brisson and Jim Anderson and Tom Griswold that they would be willing to work to put together this concert to develop a funding base and to make it work, we said, oh wow, we're really grateful. This is a great opportunity for us. Their concerns were, where's the money going to go? Who's going to manage the money? We explained to them, hey, look at Soldier On, everyone that works for Soldier On is funded by a government grant, okay? whether it's state, local, or federal grants. So all our salaries are paid that way. And all the money we raise goes into LLC accounts in the states we raise it in. Because otherwise, the people in New Hampshire and the people in Massachusetts, the people in New Jersey, the people in Pennsylvania, people in Connecticut would all feel who benefits. So we have to set up separate corporations in each state that receive the funds. And the monies raised here will only go to the Albany project and will only go to the building in the and the equipment that goes into the buildings. If somebody comes along and says, I want to give you money for something different than that, then we would designate it for that, and then it would be transparent. So everything you do will be transparent. Everything we do will be wide open so people don't have to worry about that. And what we want to do is be able to serve as many veterans from this area as possible. Here's what we know about veterans. Generally, the VA serves one out of every three veterans it's supposed to serve. Seventy percent of our veterans are unidentified and unserved by the Veterans Administration. Some of that's a result of an error of veterans who didn't trust anybody in government and wouldn't come in for services regardless of what price they had to pay. And part of it is the fact that we developed a model where the VA operates essentially about 125 medical centers across the country with about 425 outreach centers out around them. 
if you do the math of all that, approximately 50% of the veterans in America live within 25 miles of a VA center. So we know when people have to travel more than 25 miles, they're not going for services, are they? So one of the beauties of the model that we build is we deliver services where you live. Part of our work in New York State and the 40 counties we're working in now is we're delivering services where people live every day. We're trying to uh, make it so veterans feel they're cared for, they're special, and have that opportunity. I would just like to, in wrapping this up, say I think this is a great day for veterans. I think what we need to do also, and people need to get this, while we do all this work, and we, on days like this, and on May 31st, we're going to celebrate veterans, the other 364 days, we need not to get off mission. This isn't about parades and saying thank you. This is about the only way to pay back men and women who said they would die for us is for us to give them our very best with no strings attached and no conditions attached. I promise you this. The New York State Center that we will build in Albany will serve all veterans and we will have no excuses to reject any vet based on discharge, behavior, attitude, or condition. Okay? We will serve you. Until we demand that of each other, we get to judge. And we're through judging vets at Soldier On. And we're into embracing vets and thanking them for giving us the privilege to serve them. Thank you. That's why we saved them for last. Yeah, I'm not going to try to follow that. Nope. Um, but I, I do want to thank again for all the partners, everyone at this table, the veterans out in the audience, uh, for making this happen and making it a reality. And uh, I look forward to the leadership in the legislature and Rich Jacobson here to, uh, you know, hand this title over to the Soldier On in early 2014, which would be fantastic. Um, I'm not going to try to trump what he just did. There's no way. But. In conclusion of this uh, press conference, again, I can't thank everyone enough that's sitting at sitting to the left and right of me that is making this a reality and their hard work behind it. But at this time, I don't know if the media has any questions for anyone up here. Yes, no. Speak now before I let them go. Uh, there, there is a link that, we'll, uh, that we do have on our website for the video, if you want to capture the videos, the two videos that we showed. So there is a link, uh, I believe. Uh, Mary, you can go to Albany County and get it? Yeah, we can get it out to you right now. Can... Yes, yes, and she can give you the link to that. But uh, thank you for coming, everybody. I appreciate it. Johnny, you're old enough, you're bold, play your fiddle hard. Call sales smokers in Georgia and the devil gives you cars. If you win, you'll get the shiny fiddle made of gold. If you lose, the devil gets you sold.